Our last topic in data modeling is normalization. And then next week we will be starting SQL. Normalization is used in conjunction with creating ER diagrams to evaluate the structure that you have created, minimize redundancy, and this reduces your data anomalies. These are all terms we're going to get to. You see here three types of normal forms, first, second, and third. There's actually more, but for most business purposes, if you get to third normal form, you have eliminated most data redundancies. Here the author says, after the initial design is complete, you will normalize and analyze the relationships. And I'll step through how to do this. But notice also mentions alternatively, and also more frequently, database designers are asked to modify existing data structures from spreadsheets or old databases. That is my experience. I've been asked from businesses that has used Excel to store their data inefficiently and to pull into access to automate some things. So the first thing I have to do is look at that existing data and look for the redundancies and bring it from an unnormalized format to third normal form that I can have it in a database with multiple entities and relationships. Let's define a functional dependency. Here is a definition we totally won't get. It'll need some explanation. A column, attribute B, is functionally dependent on another column, A, or possibly a collection of columns, like a composite key, if a value for A determines a single value for B at any one time. To demonstrate this, if I know sales rep, I will know Exactly one last name, Jones. Three does not determine any other last name. And first name, street, city, state, zip, commission, pay class, and rate. Because that's the definition of a primary key. Sales rep number is the primary key. So every other attribute in the table should be functionally dependent on sales rep number. Notice over here we don't have a lot of data so sometimes this process requires a little more than three records to determine this and when I was pulling data from Excel into a database often I would have to look at data to see if any if there are any other functional dependencies. In this case rate when the pay class is one the rate seems to be five Let's say that rate is functionally dependent on pay class. And here's some more examples of functional dependency. So we got customer num as the primary key, and every other attribute is functionally dependent on that primary key. But also, there is another functional dependency not on the primary key, because if I know the sales rep num, I can determine uniquely the last name and the first name. Student, student num is the primary key. So all those other fields are going to be functionally dependent. But I have department num and department name. Department name is functionally dependent on department num. Because when I know department num, I know department name. Let's define determinant. So that is any column that determines another column. It's just the opposite way of looking at that expression for functional dependence. So we said maybe student last name is functionally dependent on student number. Looking the other way, you can say student number determines student last name. So student number is a determinant. If I know the value of the determinant, then I know the value of the fields it determines. For example, if I know somebody's social security number, then I know that person's first and last name. So this expression can be said, department number determines, using that arrow, department name. Sales, sales rep number determines last name and first name. When you're looking at the data, you gotta take care because just because something's unique in that particular set of data, doesn't mean it's a determinant. So I look here and I'm like, well, you give me a last name, Williams. I know the first name is Al. But we could add another record with Williams at the last name and then last name would not be determinant. Well, what is normalization? This is going to be a series of steps to eliminate anomalies within a relation to make sure the relation is well-structured. 
what are anomalies. We have an update anomaly, inconsistent data is an anomaly, an insertion or addition anomaly, and deletion anomaly. So this step-by-step -step process of normalization gives us different normal forms. We're going to go through the third normal form. Here is a hyperlink where you can see that there are other normal forms beyond third normal form. As I said, usually getting to third normal form is adequate for most businesses. The first thing you want to do before you start normalizing is identify your primary keys and any candidate keys. Remember that a candidate key is a key that could have been the primary key. So the first step is to go from unnormalized to 1NF. So you got your data in a table. You're going to keep the same table. Nothing changes there. But when it's unnormalized, you've got multi-valued fields. We've already discussed the issues with multi-valued fields. So normalization will get rid of that. This will end up changing your primary key. First normal form, which you see we will abbreviate as 1NF. It, a table is in first normal form if it doesn't have any repeating groups or multivalues. Pretty simple. Let's look at this table here. It is not in first normal form. I did mention that's identify our PK. Our primary key is order number. But this order number has two parts and these two are associated multivalued fields. Another thing that's not mentioned in the text is in order to be 1NF, you're going to have all those attributes as atomic values. How do I get that into 1NF? This is unnormalized. This simple. It's just a matter of removing the multivalue by creating another record for this order number and bringing our multi-value fields into the new record, splitting it up. This is 1NF. Do you see any problems with that? I do have a new primary key. This is not the primary key anymore, but I have a composite key. So if I go, I will never have an order number and a part number duplicated. So that's unique. If I were going to order more than one BT04 for this order, I would just update the number order. I would not create a new record. I do see maybe it's redundant that I'm storing the date more than once. Maybe, maybe that's what you notice. But let's go back to those anomalies. So anomaly from Miriam Dictionary here is something that's different or it's abnormal. And again, our anomalies in a database were insertion, update, and delete. So let's look at this and why there might be a problem. This is in 1NF, recall. And now we've added a new field, actually a few new fields to this. It's the same table, but it's decided, you know, we, we need to store the part description in order to print out the invoice. And we need to store the price in order to print out the invoice. So that data is also being stored. An update happens when you're going to edit the data. What happens if gas grill, so let's say this is going to be called the small gas grill. Well, because of the redundant data here, I've got two records, I'm going to have to modify all of them. Or if I don't, if I only notice one of them, uh, I might then have one small gas grill as a description, same part number, Maybe this still says gas grill. Or what if what if the quoted price gets updated? It can lead to inconsistent data. Let's look at the addition or insertion anomaly. I have a new part. Boss wants me to store the data on it, but there's been no orders for those parts. Well, recall that the primary key is composite. So if I have a new large gas grill and it's going to be BT05, I have to make up an order number or, you know, even though that's not a real order, what, what kind of sense does that make? I can't leave it empty. You learned from last chapter that no part of primary composite key can be null. So that's our addition anomaly. I can't even add that without making up a phony order. Here's a deletion anomaly. Some records going to be deleted. Which one? Let's go ahead and delete this record. Do I have data now about the bike? If I delete this order, I've now deleted data about uh, the bike, and that is the deletion anomaly. 
Problems occur because there are columns that are dependent on only a portion of the primary key. So that's how what we need to do to solve these anomalies in 1NF is to bring it into 2NF. So here is our new table. We do have that new composite key. We just saw there's some anomalies, but order number and part number are going to be the composite key. I said there are um, dependencies on part of the primary key. So if you take a look at every single order number, do I need to know the part number to know the order date? No. I know the order date just by knowing the order number. How about part description? Do I need the order number to know the part description? And common sense says no. Every time I see the same part number, I know the part description. It has nothing to do with the order number. I do need both fields in the key to know the number ordered and the quoted price. But obviously, if, if you had thousands of records, you could see that you will have a lot of redundancy. And we'll get rid of that, some of that redundancy by going to 2NF. Definition of a partial dependency. So we had a functional dependency, but we're going to get a little bit more specific. A partial dependency is a specific kind of functional dependency in which the determinant is only part of the primary key and not the entire composite key. From that definition, we can define how to get to second normal form. So a relation or table is 2NF. If it's already, first of all, you have to get it to 1NF. So there can't be any multi-values. And no non-key attribute or candidate key is dependent on only a portion of the primary key. In other words, there's no partial dependencies. If you have a table and there's no multi-value fields and the primary key is only a single attribute, you are already in 2NF. You got a good start. One more time, 2NF. First of all, you got to be in 1NF and there's no partial dependencies. So we're going to look at a tool now called the dependency diagram. Let's see how to read this. This is just a list of all the fields that's in my table. The author has made the composite primary key a different shade. At the top, we're saying that these two keys determine, these two fields are used together to determine all the fields in blue. And that's exactly what we want to happen because this is the key. But notice, that I only need to need no project number. That's a determinant for project name. I don't need emp number. And here I have emp number. I don't need project number to know this data. And we actually have a third type of dependency, and that's how we'll actually get to third normal form. So we'll get there in a bit. So all below the diagram are our partial and transitive dependencies which we need to eliminate to get to third normal form. Here is the dependency diagram for the orders table that we are trying to get to 2NF. Again, above the diagram is all the dependencies on our composite key. We want that. But notice that we're going to draw order number, which is part of the primary key determines order date. Part number determines part description. We need to eliminate that to get it to 2NF. So how do I do that? So once I know those partial dependencies, you are going to create a new table from each subset of the primary key that has the partial dependencies. They're going to place the fields partially dependent with the appropriate primary key. Let's go back to that dependency diagram. So this set of fields is going to come out to its own table. We'll call it the order table. And this will come out as its own table. And then we'll have what I call this, the what's left table. And the what's left table keeps the primary key. It keeps the determinant, right? but removes the dependency of that partial dependency. So what's left is going to have order num and part num and part description and number ordered and quoted price. So here we go. Here's our original table. And we're going to have orders, 
and this is its own table because of that partial dependency. We have part, and this is its own table, and I want you to notice that 12491 is only going to be here once now. And I want you to notice BT04 is only going to be in part once. However, you're going to see that we still have our composite key. That's the what's left. And this is called order line here in this case. And that lets me see that this order for this part, there was one, and it was 149. This order for this part, one was ordered for 399. So now we're in 2 and F. How do you get to 3 and F? That's what our goal is. So let's define that transitive dependency. As it is a functional dependency, a certain type of functional dependency, the attribute is dependent on another attribute. And that other attribute is not a part of the PK and it's not a part of any candidate key at all. Just another attribute is determining this attribute. To get to 3 and F, you got to start in 2 and F. And then if the only determinants are candidate keys, you're in 3 and F. If they're not, you got to move that into another. So again, if you're not in 3 and F, you're going to have similar update, addition, deletion anomalies as you did in 2 and F. They're still there. Again, in summary, you're in 3 and F when you're in 2 and F and there are no transitive dependencies. And in this table, customer number is our primary key. Notice it's not a composite key, but there is transitive dependency. Because here I've got sales rep 12, and notice that's all I need to know to know the sales rep last name and the sales rep first name. I have a transitive dependency. And here it is, right? Sales rep number is not a part of the key. It's not a candidate key. Customer number is the primary key, and there are no other candidate keys. Yet it determines both the last name and the first name of the sales rep. When we want to go to 3 and F, what we have to do is, just like we did to go to 2 and F, we're going to remove that transitive dependency, but leave the determinant into the existing table. So here, here was our entire transitive dependency. There's the determinant of that dependency. And notice that determinant is still left in the original customer table. And I hope you see, and I hope you see that the reason is that is what forces the primary key and the foreign key relation.